All right, Shalom, Rastafari, Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam. This is the 38th sabbatical um, reading and feeding, our Torah portion, our Orit, um, Minbab or Nibab, the Torah portion reading. So let's just get right into this right now. Um, there's so much to discuss, and a lot of it actually comes together with the way of Jah. So often... Like, for example, right now, there's other matters I like to teach on or to connect with this. But I'm just going to focus on this Torah portion right here. And we still have to go over some of the other um, Torah portions, kind of like um, a follow-up and stuff. I want to touch on the, the fringes, the zitzis. That's more of a ceremonial, a kind of an outer sign. Although, as a memorial, it has a purpose and is a part of our culture as Beta Israel. But this is the foundation right here, and we're going to be going to um, Bemidbar, right, the Hebrew book of Numbers, and we're going to touch on um, the 38th portion, which is known as Korah, Korah, Korah. Some might read it as Korach, but that would be incorrect. It's Korah. Now, the Hebrew um, Korah or, or, or Korah, Korah in the New Testament. Let, let's just touch on this right here in the New Testament. If we look in the New Testament, it's interesting because our Torah portion reading is uh, we call it Kore, Kore, which is Korah or Korah. Right now, um, it's Numbers. It consists of Numbers chapter 16, verse 1, to Numbers chapter 18, verse 32 for the Torah portion. For the Nabiat, the prophetical portion of the Sabbath reading is 1 Samuel chapter 11, verses 14 to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 22. And the Berit Hadash, or the Hadith Kidan, the New Testament, the New Covenant reading um, for this 38th uh, Sabbath is Romans chapter 13, verses 1 to 7. Now, if you're familiar with the scriptures... And that particular name, you know, in the New Testament, I think it's the book of Jude. Let's go to the book of Jude for a moment. Um, okay, the book of Jude. And the book of Jude has one chapter. There's one chapter in the book of Jude. I think there's a mention of of, of, of Kore, Kora, um, in... Verse 11, it says, Woe to them, this is in the, um, the, the, the paragraph or the part that is called apostasy, apostate, kahadi teachers, or those who teach that which is not correct, which is not right and exact according to the teaching of His Majesty. Apostate teachers are described in this particular section. And in verse 11 of the general epistle of Jude, or Yehuda, Judah, it says, Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. They have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the era of Balaam for reward, or for a price, and perished in the gainsaying of Kore or Kora, and here's spelled with a uh, spelled with a C. So let's um just begin with this particular Torah portion, and uh, this will be the this RSS, the Rastafari Sabbatical Study, number thirty eight, and it's known as or the name in the New Testament where we're at in in Jude chapter or in Jude, one chapter, Jude, verse 11, in Jude, verse 11, all right? So this is based on uh, Jude 11. So just use that as a reference. But Bamarinya, we call it Kore, right? Right? Kore, right? Or if you spell it out, a Q, a O, a R, and an E, and that special symbol right there, um, is an A sound, Kore, 
Kore or Korah. Now, what does the name Korah mean? Now, first of all, this particular Torah portion, um, what is contained in this particular Torah portion? In this particular Torah portion, we have um, Korah's rebellion, Korah's rebellion. We have a plague upon those who rebelled, those who, who were lawless um, to Jah's law of love and life and, and his, and his uh, instructions of law and life and liberty, the liberty. Um, the third matter is Aaron's budding staff in this particular Torah portion. And then the fourth matter is the duties of priests what are the duties of priests and the duties of Levites? Priestical duties and Levitical duties. Mindeno, you know, or, or Mindenacho. What are they? All right. So the first thing we're going to touch on is, is Korah, Kore, Korach, the Hebrew name for Korah, which in turn means baldness. So what's interesting about this Kore uh, from the Hebraic, if we would look at the Hebraic in the Hebrew, right, and we're going to put an a H right here for the, or put an H-E-B for the Hebrew, this name means baldness. Now there's a link with this when we talk about crazy bald heads, the crazy bald head, the crazy bald head rebellion. But remember, the scriptures in Christ, taking the veil off of our eyes, it's not so much the outer bald-headedness, but it's the spiritual bald-headedness, all right? That, that is very important and that needs to be kept in mind. In other words, lacking those divine rays. It's almost like when um, Shamsun, uh, Samson, Samson was, was sheared. He had the locks and then he no longer had those rays. So interpreting that now spiritually, this requires a new birth. You know, this requires the Moshiach to take those veils off of our eyes. Because otherwise we'll be looking at someone who might be bald-headed on the outer and miss the one who might have some hair, but is bald-headed, not having that. In other words, it's like when um, Isaiah says, if they speak not according to these, it's because there's no light in them. If they don't speak according to the law and the testimony, it's because there's no light in them. So it means baldness as well as ice, right, hail, right, hail, or frost, right? This is, this is said to be the meaning of the Hebrew name. Now, it's the second word, and it's the first distinctive word in this parsha or this kufa, this particular um, sabbatical portion, the 38th portion in our annual um, Judeo-Christian or Ethiopian Hebrew cycle, our Rastafari churchical cycle of Orit Minbab or Torah reading. And it's the fifth, this is the fifth now in the book of Numbers. So this is the fifth reading in this particular book, the book of Numbers. As we mentioned, it constitutes Numbers chapter 16 and 1 to Numbers chapter 18, verse 32. Now, we as Hebrews and black Jews and, and faithful Rastafari in the diaspora, we generally read this in June or early July. Now, before we now go into the actual rebellion um, of, of Kore or Korah, what we'd like to do is to submit into our evidence, right, to submit into our evidence the footnote that's found right here. Now, there's a footnote. Um, once again, there's a particular footnote. It says, see Numbers chapter 16 or XVI. And it's the sin, the chatiyat, the chatiyat, what he matat, what he atat, what he missed the missing of the divine standard, the divine mark, right? The sin of Korah was denial. What, 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 was, what was the rebellion of Korah all about? It's basically he denied, or he was a kahadi, he denied the authority of Musa. So this rebellion was about denying the authority of the one 
whom Jah had sent and who Jah had appointed in spirit and in truth, and that was the man Musa or Moshe or Moses. So the sin of Korah, Korah or Koray, was denial of the authority of Moses as Jah's chosen spokesman, as the chosen spokesman of Yahweh. And, and, not just that, but coupled with that was intrusion. He intruded. I mean, he had no right to enter into this, but he intruded into the priestical office. So there was a priestical office. So now when we talk about offices and office and responsibility, that Korah, he denied the authority of Moses as Jah's chosen spokesman. Spokesman. Now, if you just think about the whole um, story within the book of Numbers and coming through even from Exodus, you, you, you know, you wonder, like, after all they had seen, after all they knew, still they did what they did. You know, knowing what they knew, they still denied that. They, they, they saw the wonders. They saw the works. They, you know, they witnessed all these things that they witnessed in real time. Now, many of us would say, well, if I saw that, I would believe. But you have to think, this is where the meditation, you have to head rest with Jah to really comprehend this. When what is the lesson now? The main question is, what is the lesson in this to us? So in verse 11 of, of the general epistle of, of Jude, of Yehuda, it says, Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, Cain the first murderer, right? and ran greedily after the era of Balaam, a, 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 a sorcerer, you know what I'm saying, a, a sorcerer, um, a cultist, so to speak, right? Um, but in this modern sense, it's like your prosperity preaches or the counterfeit um, gospel, you know what I'm saying, the, 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 the antichrist gospel that's the wolves in sheep clothing within the so-called Christian profession, or much like Balaam, if you really start to, connect the dots as they were for reward. For what? For reward. You understand? So that's connection with that whole false prosperity, so-called gospel. And lastly, thirdly, but not leastly, they perished. They perished. So notice they have gone in the way of Cain. So it's the way of Cain. They ran greedily after the era of Balaam, after the era of Balaam, for a reward, you understand, for a payment, for a price. So they kind of sold themselves. They sold their souls, so to speak. And lastly but not leastly, they perished in the gainsaying. They perished in the gainsaying of Kore. Now, what, pray tell, is the gainsaying of, 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 of Kore? What, what, what is gainsaying? You know, back in the days, they would say talking back. You know, saying that, you know, talking back, in a sense, could be considered like gainsaying. You know, I say this, now you're going to answer me back, in a sense. You know, gainsaying. So we're going to learn more about Korah's gainsaying, and then we're also going to now look at the prophetic, the revelation. You know, saying that we're going to learn the basic from the Old Testament, then we're going to see it and seek to see it through the eyes of Yeshua, taking the veil now off of our eyes. You know what I'm saying? Now seeing it spiritually, not just the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law. We have to understand now the spirit of the law of life in Yeshua HaMoshiach, Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Right? And there's more that Jude says. If you're not familiar with it, definitely will say go to the New Testament, check out the book of Jude. Now, with that in mind, we want to go to the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. We found it interesting, as we say often, and we advise the disciples, start to study names. When you see names, and the, the, the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary is an excellent resource that helps I and I to look at this more metaphysically, you understand, or spiritually. They call it metaphysics, but really to see the spiritual um, interpretation. So right here we have Kore, right, Kore, and it's similar to another name. Another Levite who was a descendant of Korah also was named Kore, and they spelled his name in the Bible like this, both a K, K-O-R-E.